All right, here's a, a story that, that I'm sure is going to uh, make you a day. So in Montana, uh, young environmentalist uh, activists, uh, these are young people, sued the state of Montana, <coughs> um, uh, sued them because um, the, the young people argued that uh, the state agencies were violating the young people's constitutional right to a clean and healthy environment by allowing fossil fuel development. A judge yesterday ruled in their favor. He ruled that the state has an obligation, an obligation to consider, or has an, a constitutional obligation, to consider the, uh, a clean and healthy environment for young people. And as a consequence, right, uh, to reevaluate all fossil fuel permits, all fossil fuel permits. Right? It's the first time a U.S. court has ever ruled against a government for violating a constitutional right based on climate change. Uh, and... Um, now, this is a state court, not a federal court. It's based on the state constitution, not the U.S. Constitution. And, you know, this is going to be appealed, and, and we will see what happens on appeal. And, of course, you know, Montana is a major producer of coal, uh, coal burnt electricity, has large oil and gas reserves that are, that are being uh, exploited. Um, and, and this is, uh, you know, for now... I think primarily just a, a big PR stunt, but it is a big deal. Right? This is a, a big deal. These young people uh, are convinced that they are going to, they'll be convinced by Greta and her pals and her intellectual uh, uh, supporters that they are going to die. Uh, they are, their lives are going to be shortened by the use of fossil fuels, and they are demanding that the, states, uh, that the state protect them. Um, you know, uh, 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 the dean of the Lewis and Clark Law School in Portland says, the ruling really provides nothing beyond emotional support for the many cases seeking to establish a public trust right, human right, or federal constitutional right to a healthy environment. There is no such right, not in the U.S. Constitution, uh, and not that this, even our Supreme Court, will accept. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just unbelievable that, a, that a, 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 a judge would rule this way, uh, undermining the, 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 the entire nature of uh, our Constitution, uh, that we have some kind of right to, to these kind of outcomes. Um, where would these kids be? Would they even exist? How would their lives, what would their lives be like if we didn't have fossil fuels? They have no conception of that. No conception of that. I was encouraged today, though, to read... Oh, I think I just closed that window. Um, uh, to read out of the UK a, a, like a, 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 a substack. This is... Sub, uh, yeah, here it is. It's a substack. Um, it's the Claire Fox substack. But it's an it's a, a academy of ideas out of the UK. Uh, the title is Extreme Weather. Can we adapt to a changing climate? And his conclusion at the end is... Um, should we spend trillions on reducing our greenhouse gas emissions? Given that economic losses from such events can be enormous, isn't prevention better than cure? Or would that money be better spent on making society more resilient to extreme weather? Does the narrative of climate change catastrophe get in the way of less dramatic measures that can protect people and property? And he's talking about the fires in, uh, among other things, the fires in uh, Hawaii. And the, and the focus of the article is climate deaths are down. We can spend money, not that much money, on preserving human life. Uh, and it's actually, and the cost of reducing fossil fuels is just astronomical when we can spend a fraction of that protecting ourselves from, uh, you know, uh, uh, nature, from... Uh, maybe catastrophic event uh, or bad consequences of climate change. And it's straight out of Alex Epstein, right? I mean, the whole line of reasoning 
is straight out of Alex Epstein. So here you have an Academy of Ideas, which is kind of a left of center organization in London, in the UK. Uh, hard to identify left of center. They're very good on free speech, but uh, Claire Fox, I mean, basically it's a Marxist organization that is good on free speech and anti-woke, but they're Marxist in a sense of class, redistribution, state ownership of resources, things like that. So it's really, it's interesting kind of the combination. But uh, here they're taking on climate change. They're taking a, a, at least this one writer of theirs, Rob Loyne's, uh, a uh, Alex Epstein approach to climate change. So they, we are having an impact out there somewhere. Somewhere.